Yo, what is up guys? It is Small back again with another Epic 7 video for you guys today. And today we're going to be talking all about the new limited unit Midnight Gala Lilius and if she's actually really worth pulling for. Now her animations and her design looks amazing, but a lot of people are saying that's the only thing that she's really good for, just looking nice because her kit isn't that great in most areas of content. So let's actually look at her skills very quickly and we'll talk about them one by one. So taking her S3, take the lead, this is a single target attack that will give her an attack buff and also we'll see our push herself. Also, when the target's max health is greater than Lilius's, you will penetrate the target's defense going up to 100% and this will always result in a critical hit, meaning you don't need any critical hit chance on her. Now to actually get that full penetration of 100%, you actually need a health difference of 15,000 with your target, and most Lilius's even on Torn set will be around 8k health, meaning to get this full penetration you need to use this on a 23k health target, meaning that you can only really one shot like really tanky units. Now this always results in a crit so you can actually always crit ML Landies and anything with those buffs that increase critical hit resistance but keep in mind those units usually won't be above 23k HP namely ML Landies will be about like 16k 17k sometimes 18k and you will not one shot with this S3 because the defense will not be fully penetrated so it kind of counterintuitive but she is very good against very tanky units like LRK and even SCROL she can end up one shotting with her S3 if she is properly built. Now looking at her S2 elaborate scheme. So this is going to be at the start of battle and at the end of the turn, you'll grant yourself damage limit. Damage limit will not allow you to take more than 35% of your max HP in one attack. And also when you attack a target, if their health is actually 50% or lower, you will activate another now or never ability. And this ability will give everyone attack buff and also CR push everyone by 10%, which is amazing. Now this damage limit initially was supposed to be undispellable, but Smilegit did change it to actually a dispellable buff. As you guys can see, it's not um, that solid blue background. It's the black background, which means it is dispellable. So they're kind of making it so that you kind of want to build effect resist, so you actually don't lose this buff. But in the grand scheme of things, you're way better off just ignoring effect resist overall and just going for full damage so you can one-shot tanks with your S3. If you guys try to build her on effect resist like I actually have, you're going to need insane gear to make her work. Otherwise, you won't be one-shotting tanks and your damage will be very low. And honestly, it's not really worth building effect resist until you get to like 200% effect resist or higher because you're still going to get stripped by like Angel of Lights and like even SC ROLs if they have some effectiveness built into their stats, which usually they do. Next, we have our S1, Go Kyla. It's a single target attack. This will actually recover your health depending on your own attack and also successful hit will also always result in a crit making her very good against, like I said, units that have built-in crit resistance like ML Landy. So yeah, basically she is kind of used to counter very tank units. She's also going to be used against crit resist units, uh, but I think for the most part for PvP, you're going to want to use her in very aggressive comps. Even cleavers will do very well with her because of the fact that she's going to be very squishy if you build her on full damage and her damage limit will likely get dispelled off. So she's not going to live that long unless you invest her into effect resist build. But even then, what ends up happening is your damage will be too low. So I think she's mostly going to be used for aggressive players and she'll be like a fourth or fifth pick in RTA. You can use her to snipe out tanks. And in Guild Wars offense, she'll be decent against defenses that can't actually hit her. And if you can protect her very easily, she'll be very strong. Keep in mind, she's very weak to like Angel of Lights, like I said, because of her damage limit being able to be dispelled and anything that can just dispel her buff in general. Looking at her artifact, guys, this is also a limited artifact for her. You're going to see it is a effect resist boosting artifact because, like I said, Smilegate kind of wanted her to be like an effect resist using damage dealer, which in theory sounded good, but in practice, it's not really worth it to build effect resist on her. And also when attacking, if the target's health is 50% or more, you'll do extra damage. So kind of like a, a symbol of unity, except you're not getting hit chance, you're getting effect resist instead. And this will only work against targets with 50% or more, which is fine because usually you're going to be S3ing anyways. But the thing is, this artifact, even though it gives you effect resist, you're not going to be using this for the most part because, like I said, she's best going to be built on a full damage nuking style. So this is actually my Lilius right now. You can see, like I said, you don't really want to run her on an effect resist build, but I do have her on one. Overall, she's going to be at like 160% effect resist, but this isn't nearly enough for like Angel of Lights. So it's mostly here just to stop units that can actually strip her. Sometimes like SC ROLs, if they're not built on too high effect resist, or effectiveness rather, they can't really strip her or like conquer release and stuff like that if I get lucky. Um, but for the most part, it's not really worth it because you can see that my damage on this build is pretty low. So usually you want to aim for about like 4k attack 
310%, 320% crit damage to one-shot tanks reliably. But because I have some subs invested into effect resist, you'll see that she won't actually end up one-shotting some units unless they are you know, very, very squishy. Um, and not squishy enough where I'm not getting this full penetration rate. So I think the best way to build her actually is going to be zero effect resist, full damage around 240, 250 speed, and you want her on speed set and torrent set actually. So yeah, I think that's the best way to build her. Otherwise, you're going to be missing out on a lot of damage. Um, my Midnight Call Lilius is not really practical, but I do have fun with this effect resist build to surprise people, especially in RTA. But I think overall, the most common way to build her will be to actually build her very fast and also build her on high damage. Now, I think this unit is not terrible. I think she is okay for PvP. Like I said, she is a fourth or fifth pick in RTA. You can use her in Guild Wars offense. Um, in Arena offense, she's pretty bad because there's so many Angel of Lights everywhere and even like Bellions that can strip her damage limit if you don't have her on effect resist. And in PvE, she's okay for like Ice Expedition and Banshee 13 one-shot, but there's so many units that can do that as well. So I'm not really too sure if it's really worth pulling for her strictly for PvE if you're new to the game. Um, I would say that it's definitely worth pulling for her based off her design. Her design and animations look amazing, but from a gameplay standpoint of view, I think she's just mediocre at best, right? If you're looking for a good unit to nuke tanks, there's so many good options, right? You have like Ben Amaro who can do it if you actually bring him to extra target teams. Uh, you can use units such as like Hua Young if you already have her. You can use the Hawk to cripple bruisers. Um, there's just so many options now. Of course, you won't get the 40k damage unless you use Midnight Galilius on like LRKs and stuff like that. Um, but keep in mind, like after S3, if she gets focused down, she's pretty success susceptible to dying because of the fact that she won't have effect resist to actually stop the strips. So I think she's pretty good. I think um, a lot of people were hyping her up because her animations looked amazing and tried to make her work like a lot. And I definitely tried to make her work for a long time, but I think she's not like super broken or anything like that. Just like a decently balanced unit. Overall, I think she's worth pulling for because yeah, she's a limited unit and her design is amazing. I think her artifact's not like the best. It's probably gonna be the best on like units such as Bloodblade Karen and like and um Kron, I guess, because they want effect resist to resist their immortality from getting stripped. And also you get extra damage, right? When the target's health is more. So it's pretty good for them because they're usually counter cleaving. But for Midnight Gala Lilius, like I said, you probably don't want to run this on her unless you're running a weird effect resist build like I am. Definitely want to just run her on full speed and you know just damage overall. I think she's better off on damage artifacts such as like Symbol of Unity is probably her best, or even Alexa's Basket. Uh, but it's really up to you how you want to build her and if you want to actually use her in PvP. And yeah, she's very hard to build, guys, so you have to keep that in mind. Like, looking at this weapon, like this weapon here, um, it's 91 gear score, which is not that good for late game players that want to push an RTA. But the thing is, like, it's really hard to get pieces that use the subs that we she wants, right? She doesn't want health because she wants that defense penetration. She doesn't really care too much about defense, although it's okay on her because of the fact that she has this damage limit anyways. And she doesn't need crit chance, right? So all you need is attack, effect resist, speed, and crit damage. Only four subs really, with effect resist probably being like the least useful one out of the four. So she really only needs attack, speed, and crit damage. Everything else is just wasted sub stats, so you have to be very careful when building her. And it's very hard to build her because a lot of pieces like this that you, you probably crafted in the past, you most likely threw away because no DPS units really used effect resist for the most part. Um, but now like we have a unit like this that is going to use these subs. So a lot of the time you're going to have wasted stats into crit chance like I do. The only thing that's most important, guys, is you make sure you have zero health subs on your pieces because that will lessen the damage of your S3. And as you guys can see, I have one health sub here, so it's pretty bad. Um, but hopefully I can get some pieces to replace her gear. I don't think she's like a must-must build, uh, but she's definitely fun to have and fun to use. Let me know what you guys think about Midnight Gala Lilies down below. I think at first I thought she'd be a very good uh, ML Landy counter, but I think she's very hard to use against her sometimes because uh, if ML Landy counters your Midnight Gala Lilies, you kind of just lose. And she's only really good, it seems like, into like very high health units. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. And as always, leave a like and also subscribe to help me out. And I'll see you guys next video.